Assistant Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Bayelsa State, Amadein Teribe, Teribebi, has been apprehended by officers of Zone 15 of the Nigerian police for allegedly possessing illegal firearms. According to pressman Tebiebi, a former militant, is currently being interrogated at the Criminal Investigation Department of the Bayelsa State Police Command. The interrogation is taking place there due to the lack of detention facility at the Zone 16. The BAB's arrest on Monday follows an incident on November 2021 when one Richard Okon was detained for allegedly possessing illegal firearms during a wake keep in Kuluama community located in the southern Ijo local government area of Bayoso State. In a recorded confession, Okon claimed that the firearm in question belonged to Tebiebi, for whom he was working for at the time. However, the matter was not pursued further after the incident. And according to the police insider, Tebiebi was initially invited by the police but managed to secure his release by presenting falsified licenses and forged documents aided by his inflexual connections. His recent arrest stems from a fresh petition accusing him of making threats to life. And the source noted that Tebiebi, undeterred by the 2021 incident, continued to flaunt his connections with impunity. I beg to stop there for now. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Andy. Uh, we are seeing a position, a, a situation where uh, politicians are now having uh, the guts, if I should say so, because the law does not permit it, to bear firearms and in the open and even loan to friends. And is this an intention to create fear pending when they decide to use that to uh, muzzle their way through uh, the, the, the electorate, maybe during election purposes? Or uh, is, it, uh, is it supposed to be a fundamental human right for Nigerians to now bear arms, being that maybe we are not as secure as we ought to be? It's two different sides of the coin. Okay, so the law today as we know it in Nigeria is one that, if you may, addresses different situations using different measures. Um, if an ordinary person, quote and unquote, were to carry firearms, for instance, the way it would be treated would be different from when someone who is heavily connected politically is carrying firearm or bearing firearm. We have seen that even in this story that you have spoken about, how that the police said that in the first instance, mm. he presented falsified, fake documents. How did they know it was fake documents, yet they allowed him yeah. to leave their custody? Exactly. exactly. For you to be coming to the public and saying that the first time he, was, he, he escaped the big arm of the law. In Nigeria, the arm of the law is not so big anymore because those who abuse the law understand that it's just a matter of having connect and connections. And that big arm would be suspended and it would not be able to do anything to you. How come, as a police force, you understood that it presented certain things that were fake as far back as 2001 and you let him continue? It speaks to the fact that once you were, you were a politically exposed person in Nigeria, the law will treat you differently from how it will treat those who are not politically exposed people. So that today, do they want to tell me, Andy Akbotive, that they are not aware that there are certain non-state actors, even in river states, mm. in certain communities in river states, that openly bear arms and carry arms and create order in their society, yeah. create order in their local government, create order in their communities, People who are non-state actors, yeah. their leaders say to them that they are the one. I don't want to mention their names. The police force, the police hierarchy, the, the, the top echelon of those who are in the security business, they understand these things. But again, this is Nigeria, mm. where the truth is might is always right, and right always kutu to might. This is Nigeria. And we must understand that this is the condition we have found ourselves. 
I am tempted to say, even on air, that why you find that the police prosecutes one of these kinds of people every now and again is not sometimes far from the truth that they may just want them to realign. Because politicians are not interested in having conversations, in having people like Andy and his likes, you know, on bed with them. They are interested in having those who can wield firearms, those who can pull out firearms at will, those who, you know, um, if you may, are political structures. So firearms are a political economy. Absolutely. A you know, you know, political economy is a currency. It's a currency that is very, very important mm. for politicians. Mm. Either to go and disrupt the stronghold of your opponent or to help you perpetuate yourself in office mm. by stuffing ballot boxes, shooting guns in the air, running with ballot boxes. This is what we have in Nigeria. And I, I do not understand how sometimes we bury our heads like, you know, um, uh, 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 the proverbial ostrich, you know, and pretending that we do not know that these things exist. When in truth, there is no Nigerian, no politician who doesn't understand and who doesn't know that indeed Nigerians that are non-state actors are everywhere in the north, in the south, in the east and the west, bearing firearms openly and nothing is going on. Okay, we have a situation in River State here when one of uh, former militants was declared wanted by the police yes. for, for uh, you know, making threats against the, the, for, the, the, the former governor and the minister of, uh, uh, of the Federal Capital Territory. And we have not heard anything concerning that. And he is, per se, in support of the governor. And the governor has not said anything about it. You will it. not hear anything. Uh, where, how would you hear it? Who would give the authorization? Mm -hmm. I am just, to, and, and, and I'm tempted not to, me, not to mention the community. If you got to that community now as I speak with you, you found some people that go by certain names, a first, uh, whatever, then you have soldiers mm. that are parading. They say they are non state actors. They are carrying guns everywhere. Openly, they are displaying guns. And it's not just a river state, too. Oh. You found that everywhere in the country. You found it in Lagos State. You found it in Ibadan, you found it in the north, you found it in the east. This is what Nigeria has come to be. And sometimes, I'm wondering if they should not just allow everybody to carry firearms. I was about to if ask that question. If a few people already openly carry firearms and they are threatening the rest you, of Nigeria. Do you support for Nigerians and average citizens no, to carry arms? No, arms? we cannot descend to that level where a society that is not adequately equipped is allowed to carry firearms. I say to people that the man who is wealthy can decide to um, eat so much with his family yeah. and not be troubled about certain medical conditions that may come as a result of overfeeding. But if you are not wealthy, you took caution yeah. in what you ate, how you ate it. First off, in how you are able to purchase that thing, and even if someone gives it to you freely, mm. you understood that if you ate it and it gave you certain medical conditions that will end up taking it to the hospital, mm. you may not have the means to be able to address that. Yeah. What have I said all of this? In America, where there is the understanding, there is adequately the protocol arranged properly that can be respected on what it will take for you to go get firearm how you would get firearm, mm. what protocols you must, you must trigger before firearm you know, is sold to you. A system that is that organized mm. can decide to have firearm. But imagine Nigeria where you, you... I was saying to a friend today who said to me that um, his business, he needed some monies to get... He had gone to banks to get loans, and they were not giving him loans. And he wanted to pursue a few other protocols from the banking system to get a loan, and they were putting too much... Um, too much, um, too much uh, rules for him to get it. And I said, why would they not do that? When in Nigeria, today, nobody understands where you live. Mm -hmm. Nobody understands how to trace you if you took their money and you ran away. There's no social security system in Nigeria. Yeah. If you took loans in America, if you were going to leave the airport, for instance, mm -hmm. they, would, they would accost you. How are you leaving? What did you leave behind? You want to take our money and run to Nigeria? You want to take our money and run to Ghana? 
But in Nigeria, you do not have those kinds of systems. Until we are able to institute those kind of systems, we cannot say we want to start bearing firearms. However, why is it that in Nigeria, there are some animals that are more equal than the others. Exactly. Those animals are having the edge over others. For instance, who are the people that are, that they are giving the, the contract to protect uh, the, the, the pipelines in Nigeria? Who are the people that governors are having uh, conversations with and they will call the governors, the governors will say, you can come, have open access. Who are the people that today are in NDDC as SSA, SA, I hear that even in NDC right now, if you count the number of SAs and SSAs, that you have both to the MD, to the chairman, to the EDFA and all that, they are enough to fool a state, a full state. The number of SSA and SAs that you have there, who are these SSAs and SAs? What are the criteria, if you may, that they use to, you know, get these SAs there? The truth of the matter is that Nigeria, we have come to understand that if you pursue violence mm. as against pursuing academics, as against pursuing logic and sense, you have a higher chance of becoming politically as compared to the person who is pursuing education. Okay. Wow. And that's why you are seeing that, you know, um, the likes of this man that we have just talked about are interested in carrying fire. More people are carrying firearms, and more people will carry firearms. Whoa, that's a major disconnect in our political system. Even